second division. Bob Stoko, the first to congratulate Montgomery, who, after all the league's pressure, along with David Watson there, did so well in the second half against the Leeds attack. What a moment in football. A piece of football history, the first time in 42 years that a second division side has come to Wembley and won the FA Cup. And Stoko promised an upset, and they beat Manchester City in the sixth round. Arsenal in the semi-final, and now the cup holders in the final, and who can deny their right to the silver trophy? And so the Sunderland supporters rise as the team prepares the long walk to the Royal Box. Sunderland last won the cup on their only Wembley appearance in 1937. And now in 73, the new Sunderland step forward to receive the trophy once more. Bobby Kerr, the smallest captain, surely, ever to lay hands on this trophy. The Royal Highness, the Duchess of Kent. And no wonder he kissed it. A moment to treasure. Sutherland, senior professional at 29, signed as a schoolboy, so good in the second half, takes the flip. Richie Pitt, just behind Montgomery, the centre-back, only 21. The youngest player on the field, Mick Horswell, who gets one of the greatest honours to early. David Watson, Billy Hughes, Mick Haller, Ron Guthrie, a Newcastle reserve until mid-season. Dick Malone. Dennis Stewart. Ian Porterfield, the man who made it possible with the only goal of the match. And the substitute, David Young, who wasn't necessary. And so now, Leeds make the journey they know so well, having lost another major trophy on the threshold of winning one. Bremner smiling in defeat. And his side today, for once, well, they've looked human. And as Kerr rises to salute the Sutherland supporters, it's always a sad moment at Wembley as the losing side disappear, walking almost unnoticed back to the dressing room. Bobby Kerr's salute to the Sunderland supporters and the red and white colours blossom from that bank in the terracing. Three players have broken away, David Watson, Jim Montgomery and Dick Malone. Billy Hughes and the youngest of them all, Mick Horsman. achievement for this man who's known the hard times with lowly clubs at Bury, at Charlton at Rochdale Carlisle at Blackpool but now tastes the big time in the most major way possible a moment to taste Sunderland and Bob Stokoe revelling in the taste of victory. And they'd enjoy a few other tastes besides at a special post-match banquet at London's Park Lane Hotel. Joined by the Match of the Day cameras and David Coleman. Well, one of the great things about the Sunderland side winning the FA Cup is not only the way they won the FA Cup and the freedom with which they played, but the way they're enjoying winning the FA Cup. They're all around me here tonight. They've absolutely been absorbed with what's going on there. Bob, 
this is the sort of day you've got to savour. It's precious in any football manager's life. And it's come to you in a strange sort of way. It's quite unbelievable, isn't it? Yes, it is, David. But, uh, you know, all credit to the players. I've had a lot of praise uh, thrown at me. But uh, a manager's only as good as his players. And my players don't like to get beat, you know. And they've proved this all the way through. And we've got better and better. And it's great to beat the big boys, David. Great. You've nodded hard, Bobby. A couple of broken legs uh, in the early days, and you've been at Sunderland for a long time, a comparatively long time. How would you explain the difference, you know, to what's happened since this man beside you came in? Well, I, I just think he's given us a freedom of the expression, you know, and he's just so, so much a happy-go-lucky bloke that you, you just have to do it for him. I'm That's told he's it. not very happy if he loses. No, he's, he's a bad loser, even in five or sides. He's a very bad loser. And his golf as well. Oh, I, he's a very bad loser. Now. <laughs> <laughs> well, th th this is what the game's all about, David, and th this is what I hope will rub off. I, I mean, I play with him at five or side snook or whatever it is, and my attitude is one to win, and I think if it rubs off on the lads and they get their right sort of attitude through the week, it must show on a Saturday afternoon because this is the only time people want to know you in this game is if you win is. And... Uh, you, you know, these lads have worked so hard for it, and, and I like to think that some of it has rubbed off. Whether I'm a bad loser or not, I, I'm, I'm going to continue the same way. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move along to Ian Porterfield, who's got a magnificent... What's the, what is that trophy for you? Well, uh, I was presented with this uh, tonight at the banquet for uh, scoring the winning goal. Quite honestly, if I could divide into pieces and give each lad a piece, the 12 of us would have... You know, it'd be divided into 12, because um, I feel it was a team effort. You know, I, I scored the goal. I was the lucky one today to score the goal, but... Um, I would like to you know, share it with the lads because they helped as well. It was David Watson who helped a bit there, wasn't it? Well, Billy Hughes crossed the ball. It was a great corner. Um, Dave Watson went up well there, and uh, you know he took two defenders with him. I think possibly, you know, Dave uh, caused a bit of problems in there when you know in set pieces, and it left me that little bit of room, you know. And I had stacks of time to pull it down and you know stick it away with that lethal right foot I've got. <laughs> <laughs> How many goals have you scored this season with your right foot? Um, I think I've got... I, <laughs> no, I think, I think quite honestly, I think I've got about three. You know, the boss... I keep, I keep, I keep, I keep telling him I've got three and he, he never, ever believed it. But I have actually, you know, but uh, none so important as this one today. People are talking tonight about that save of yours in the second half being in the Gordon Banks World Cup class. Now, of course, really, it was two saves, wasn't it? Yeah, well, the cross came across from the right and... Uh, Cherry was on the far post and uh, nodded across his leg and I uh, went across and pied it out and I saw a lot of them coming in and just down in, in the path of the ball, like, you know. Hit me on and went on the ball and came out. In actual fact, when you had to go the other way, having knocked it out, I mean, it was pure reaction at that stage and hope, was it? Well, I mean, he had, uh, what, two-thirds of the goal to hit to aim at, like, so I thought, well, you know, to hell, I'll just dive at the, at the open space and it... Well, it came off like, you know. A <laughs> <laughs> little bit of modesty was that. Uh, were you trying to knock it up or, or what? I was just trying to stop it. I was trying to stop it. That was the that was the main aim. Like if if I'd push it out, somebody else would have cleared it, and that was the main aim of the uh, diving across the goal, you know. When it went up and ricocheted off the bar, did you realise what had happened? I didn't have a clue where it went actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, I turned round and. Uh, I turned around and I saw the ball, uh, that little player, and that was it. No, great. We'd won it then. That was it. Jim Montgomery recognising the moment when Sunderland knew their name was on the trophy. Their triumph and the unlikely band of heroes are still celebrated on Wearside today. And it will always be one of the biggest shocks in FA Cup final history. 1973, forever Sunderland's year, another classic FA Cup year. Join us again soon for some more of its wonderful memories. Goodbye. Goodbye.